and this from the unpolluted skies of equatorial Africa. A fuzzy cloud called the coma, clearly visible as it shrouded the comet's nucleus. A curved tail of dust that appeared yellowish to the naked eye. And a straight tail of gas, fluorescing blue over millions of kilometers. Another view from Africa. And for the first time, scientists did more than merely observe the comet. They reached out to it. As Halley sped past, an armada of robot spacecraft raced to intercept it. The most ambitious was a European probe named Giotto. Giotto was going for the closest of close encounters. It was to fly right through the inner coma, the cloud of dust and gas that surrounds the nucleus. And there was the nucleus, like a peanut, a lump of primeval matter, 16 kilometers by nine. Through the glare and fog, this was the very face of Halley. Vaporized by the heat of the sun, gas vented from cracks in the surface at 20 tons a second, dust at 10. The coma, fed by the jets, was well over a million kilometers across, bigger even than the sun. Giotto's transmission was knocked out with little more than a thousand kilometers to go. But the probe had revealed a hardened shell of carbon black over an icy interior. From Earth, Halley put on its best show as it pulled away from the sun. Photographed over several months, the comet's tail lengthened and shortened day to day. Its overall brilliance fluctuated too. Astronomers attributed the variations to the solar wind, to changes in the composition of the comet's surface, and to the rotation of the nucleus. From the deep chill beyond Neptune to its tour of the sun, Halley's surface had heated to over 90 degrees Celsius. In the late 80s, as Halley receded, so its image faded. Then suddenly, in 1991, it brightened. Could the comet have collided with something? We'll find out. 2061. By 1994, as it headed out past Saturn, Halley's comet was a few specks on a photograph. As we've seen, comets can originate in the Oort cloud, but some, like Halley, come from closer in, from just beyond the farthest planets. It's a region called the Kuiper Belt, and when Halley began tumbling inward, it was lucky. Instead of falling into the sun, Halley swung round it. But that means Halley is captive, locked in a vast ellipse that will take it round the sun again and again. At 76 years, Halley's orbit is relatively short. Longer period comets arrive from farther out, from the Oort cloud. Comets like Hale-Bopp, the most spectacular of recent times. Hale-Bopp, which appeared in 1997, has an orbital period of several thousand years. Here in close-up, Hale-Bopp's nucleus was 40 kilometers wide. It swirled gas and dust. They streamed from the hemisphere heated by the sun switching on and off as the nucleus rotated. At its closest to the sun, Hale-Bopp shed a thousand tons of dust every second. Little wonder there's less and less of a comet each time it passes the sun. Unlike comets, asteroids are from closer to home. Like a planet that never coalesced, they form a ring between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars, 
the asteroid belt. Made of sterner stuff than comets, asteroids are rock and metal, debris from the birth of the solar system. Within the belt, asteroids are harmless, but accidents happen. Collision or a jolt from Jupiter's gravity and an asteroid is knocked from its orbit. Drawn inward by solar gravity and with a nudge from Mars, this space mountain is now a projectile. 65 million years ago, this is believed to have happened. 10 kilometers of rock and metal were on a collision course with Earth. It was doomsday for the dinosaurs. Earth suffered a cosmic winter and mass extinction. At least 100,000 dislodged asteroids cross the orbit of Earth. 2,000 are big enough to cause us problems. This one is Eros, 40 kilometers wide. So real is their threat to Earth that NASA commissioned a probe to Eros to analyze and image the asteroid from every angle. In 2001, the probe landed on Eros, the better to make its acquaintance. Were we hit by Eros, nothing. No life on Earth would survive. The worry is that for every asteroid plotted here, 20 or more are yet to be discovered. So what could we do if one were headed our way? It's still science fiction, but we could build a parabolic mirror. Towed into space, it could concentrate reflected sunlight on an intruder and scorch it off course. In another concept, giant pods might close with an enemy asteroid and attach to its surface. They would release super sails that caught the solar wind and tugged the intruder away. Or how about this device? Like a celestial outboard motor, it could shunt the object to a safer course. But suppose there was too little warning. A space rock would hit us in weeks. Would we go for the nuclear option? It would be a last resort either as a standoff blast or a direct strike. Who could predict if it would save the world?